Okay. Yeah. <laughs>
Good morning. Welcome to our service this morning on this fine May morning. Um, I'm up here because Jennifer is away at the uh, Tri-Regional Council meeting in uh, Port Elgin this morning, uh, has been for the weekend. Um, she'll be taking part in the uh, ordinations of uh, new clergy and other activities in the role as her, uh, as she's the president of our Western Ontario Waterways region. So uh, I'm sure they have a busy, a busy agenda than have had this last while. Our moderator is there and uh, there's lots of uh, action. I think they had 40, 45 ordinations and Jennifer was involved in nine in our direct area. So that's, uh, if, I think I got that semi-correct anyways, that yes. So um, it's a busy, a busy place over in Port Elgin today. Um, again, after two weeks of being extremely busy in this congregation, it's kind of nice to just relax a bit. So I do want to thank everyone uh, that was involved way back when we had the fish dinner and then we had the, uh, our uh, yard sale and all the other activities that uh, in the last two weeks that we've been involved with. So it's, uh, it's been a busy a busy time and we've got other events happening right up until till June. Um, so I want to thank you again for all your support to make these events happen and uh, make them what we hope is a success. Um, please take the time to uh, read through your bulletins, not necessarily during the service, but if, <laughs> if things go south you've got something to do. So uh, yeah, yeah, you can keep yourself occupied. So. Uh, um, anyways, there's lots of activities that uh, may pertain to you or, or your committee. Um, also in the bulletins, uh, please, and for the next while, we're going to print the, uh, the insert for our summer services. We just take on a little uh, different program for summer. Um, so we just change things up a little bit for July and August. So please take note of those uh, particular items um, as you will. Joys and concerns, um, please keep in mind anyone, I don't have up-to-date lists on uh, members that uh, are needing prayers, but please keep in mind those that you know of, um, and if anyone has, uh, yeah, privately, or, or if you want to mention anybody that uh, does need our prayers, please do so. On a lighter note, um, from my personal as a joy. Today's a busy Sunday. It's Memorial Day in the States, which means the Indy 500, the Coke 600 in NASCAR. Uh, I think there's a Formula One race and there's a Corvette show at Wasaga Beach. So when I'm done here, I'm gonna go and look at some high priced cars at the beach. So that's my, that's my joy today. So yes, big Sunday. Hilda, okay, yes. That's right, she has uh, some issues that she's dealing with. Hilda and both Hilda and Chris in our place. Yes. So please keep your brother in mind. Thank you. Today we recognize that our broader church connects us from many different areas and locations, but the land that is known as Stainer today is the traditional land of the Shinnebeg, Husaneni, Tiatani, and Wendat peoples. These indigenous nations agreed to the mutual sharing of the land with obligations and responsibilities to the environment. Throughout the years, people of many nations and nationalities have been part of the creation of the world we see and know around us. Many of them were oppressed. Many were not given choice or liberty over their involvement. Today, we pray our thanks for the conservancy and lessons of all oppressed people in our past and renew our commitment to recognize and undo legacy injustices. 
listen to the stories, and build better relationships between all races and nations. May this acknowledgement be more than just words. May it spur us into action toward reconciliation and right relations. Let us come before the Creating One as we offer our prayers, hear holy stories, and sing sacred songs. scramble for a minute. Let us take a moment to center our hearts and minds. If you feel comfortable to do so, I invite you to close your eyes for a moment, pause, breathe deeply, and feel the presence of the Holy Spirit among us, binding us together across towns, cities, rivers, forests, and fields. In this sacred time, let us open ourselves to the hope and unity that God offers. As we light the Christ candle today, let it be a symbol of Christ's presence among us and within our wider United Church community. May this light remind us of the unity we share in Jesus Christ, shining across our regions, bringing warmth and clarity to our hearts. And then we'll go to our call to worship and, and uh, do it responsively. One, or in many places we gather. From many backgrounds we come. For many purposes we serve. Together let us worship God. It's us one body, one spirit in Christ. And our prayer. Gracious God, in your wisdom, you have called us together to reflect the body of Christ. As we gather in your presence, we acknowledge our imperfections and the times we have fallen short of loving as you have taught us. Forgive us for the moments we have acted in isolation rather than seeking the strength of our community. Open our eyes to the beauty of our shared life and strengthen our hearts for the journey we undertake together. Teach us to cherish each other's gifts and to face our challenges with courage and love. As we worship today, knit us closer to one another and to you, mending our spirits and renewing our purpose. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now we'll sing hymn 509 in Voices United, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky.
I would invite the younger folks in the congregation to come up and join us for a time of wondering. Every time we gather, we create something sim simple, special. <laughs> and Jane Coots will lead you, and then you'll, after Sunday school, you'll go out to Sunday school, and Jennifer Garrier will take care of you. Okay, we got it on, yep. Who here knows what community means? A lot of people brought together, so this is a community here. Um, has anybody had an opportunity to get together with people lately? I know Zoe did. What did she do? Did you have your birthday party yet? When? Yesterday? Did you also have a, attend a birthday party? Did you go to somebody's birthday party? Who's? Mary. I knew Mary was having a birthday party, and I knew you were having a birthday party. So those occasions are kind of like a community of people that are gathering together to share something. And what are they sharing? When you get together for somebody's birthday, what are you sharing? A celebration. That's right. Something that, and celebrations are usually make you, what, what feeling do you have? Excited. Are you happy? Do you get to have fun? What kinds of things do you do when you have a celebration that's fun? What's always brings people together and everybody likes it at church when we do that? Food, 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 and what? Okay, so that's kind of like an activity. The main activity. Caught grape, crayfish. Were you in the in the creek? Oh, you did that. Was it was it fun? Did you get your feet wet? Yeah. Yeah. Did you touch the crayfish? Uh, yeah, on, oh, on your back? Ah. I don't know. I, I wasn't a fan of crayfish, actually. <laughs> they have claws on them, don't they? Yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. What other times do we get together? Can you think of something that you might be planning this summer that you might be doing that might be fun? But where? Where are you going to go? I was talking to your dad about this. Haley went the last two years, and I know Blythe is definitely going. Do you go to camp? You want to go to camp, some Presca? Yeah. Well, when you go to camp, you kind of have a different purpose for being there. What kinds of things might you be there for? To be outdoors. That's right. And when you go to Simpreska, you're not only just going outdoors, you're sharing something else among each other. A cabin. <laughs> cabin? How about the fact that you're all together and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then they become your new community but you also are sharing a spiritual thing as well because it's a church camp so we talk about God and we talk about being good and all the things that go along with being a good Christian right um, what other communities do you have you go to school is that a community yeah it's a place where you gather and you're you're all what's your purpose the biggest yeah what's the purpose of going to school to learn so we have different and to have fun and to make friends and, 
when you play you learn that's right that there's not there's there's very lots of opportunities for us to share um, like kind of cross over different communities so can, can you share your belief in God in different communities can you share like the way you are the way you behave in different communities and that way you're you're showing how you believe in God and you want to follow the way that the good Christians behave right um, and when you are in a, a gathering how do you let people know that you're glad you're there you have a smile on your face mm -hmm. uh -huh. and say, I can I have to relate back to school how do I know if I was teaching you that you were engaged If I was teaching you, what would you have to do? You have to listen, and some kids have a hard time listening. <laughs> That's right. Zoe doesn't have a hard time listening, because she's, she's very good at, at sitting there and listening. Although Amelia, <laughs> she likes to talk. <laughs> you like to participate really a lot, which is good. OK. Um, so I have a little prayer that I can send you off with that I was going to share with you. And it's about uh, community and, and uh, making the best of, of our community and sharing. So let's bow our heads and we can pray, Esme. <laughs> God, we ask for a flourishing community where neighbors learn to love each other and come to know Jesus. We pray that we can be good stewards of your love to each one of our neighbors. We ask that you help us to learn from our community, and it may be a place where all can be welcome. Amen. Okay, so I guess you can head back. Just time to go. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Illuminate our understanding, inspire our thoughts, and draw us closer to you. Amen. And Liz Cran will read us our scriptures today. Our first scripture is Psalm 133, which we will sing together. It's Voices United, number 856.
Old Testament scripture reading is found in Ezra 3, verses 1 to 13, and it is found on page 467 and 468 in your pew Bible. When the seventh month, oh, rebuilding the altar. When the seventh month came and the Israelites had settled in their towns, the people assembled together as one in Jerusalem. Then Joshua, son of Josadak, and his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and his associates, began to build the altar of, God, of the God of Israel to sacrifice burnt offerings on it, in accordance with what is written in the law of Moses, the man of God. Despite their fear of the peoples around them, they built the altar on its foundation and sacrificed burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and the evening sacrifices. Then, in accordance with what is written, they celebrated the festival of tabernacles with the required number of burnt offerings prescribed for each day. After that, they presented the regular burnt offerings, the new moon sacrifices, and the sacrifices for all the appointed sacred festivals of the Lord, as well as those brought as freewill offerings to the Lord. On the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord, though the foundation of the Lord's temple had not yet been laid. Rebuilding the Temple then they gave money to the masons and carpenters and gave food and drink and olive oil to the people of Sidon and Tyre so that they would bring cedar logs by sea from Lebanon to Joppa as authorized by Cyrus, king of Persia. In the second month of the second year after their arrival at the house of God in Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, Joshua, son of Josadak, and the rest of the people, the priests and the Levites and all who had returned from captivity to Jerusalem, began the work. They appointed Levites 20 years old and older to supervise the building of the house of the Lord. Joshua and his sons and brothers, and Cadmiel and his sons, descendants of Hodavia, and the sons of Hanadad and their sons and brothers, all Levites, joined together in supervising those working on the house of the Lord. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments with their trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, took their places to praise the Lord, as prescribed by King David of Israel. With praise and thanksgiving, they sang to the Lord, He is good. His love toward Israel endures forever. And all the people gave a great shout of praise to the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the older priests and Levites and family heads who had seen the former temple wept aloud when they saw the foundation of this temple being laid, while many others shouted for joy. No one could distinguish the sound of the shouts of joy from the sound of weeping because the people made so much noise and the sound was heard far away. Our New Testament reading is from Acts 2, verses 42 to 47. And in your pew Bibles, it's in the New Testament on page 150. The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. May this reading bless our hearts. A 
believe we just witnessed how much we appreciate having a choir and Jennifer leading us in song at different times. Um, and now we'll call on Jeff Allen to uh, give us our message, Life Together. Our message today is Life Together. I've just put a little different slant on it. Today is Trinity Sunday, when we celebrate God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Last week was Pentecost Sunday, when the Holy Spirit descended upon Peter and the other disciples and an assembled crowd. I'm always fascinated by the idea of the Holy Spirit. What exactly is it? How do we discover it within us? As good timing would have it, the daily meditations I received by email from Richard Rohr's Center for Action and Contemplation discuss the gift of the Holy Spirit, and I'll use a few excerpts um, in this week's reflection. We recall that at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit rushed in and caused all those present to speak in languages that were not their own. Each person understood the others. God did not unite the world under one imperial language, Rather, the power of God made it possible to have unity in the midst of diversity. God made it possible for people to speak languages that were not their own and to understand one another. And in the same way Jesus had broken gender and class barriers, this multi-ethnic, multilingual group turned its back on misogyny and economic favoritism. From Acts chapter 2, verse 17 to 18, Peter explained to the crowd why women and slaves were prophesying along with free men. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and, I love this bit, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women in those days, will pour out my spirit, and they will prophesy. In other words, all the cultural, economic, and gender barriers between them were broken down. Pentecost shows that the Spirit loves us so much that she wants to get inside of us, dwell in us, and commune with us in a bond of love. This divine outpouring is love for each person. The Spirit honors the bodies of all people, young, old, male, female, all human beings in the world. The Spirit is an equalizer and holy resistor to racism and racial hierarchical systems. That the Spirit fills all and rests on all, not just some bodies, provides an opportunity for those deemed non-human to reclaim their humanity in God. Pentecost shows us that the spiritual is linked to the material, and thus all human bodies matter to the life of faith. The glory of God is revealed through all human flesh and is a sign of a special favor from the Spirit. At Pentecost, each body and ethnicity is affirmed as sacred and of worth, a human being loved by God. Pentecost creates a new world, it's a new creation ignited by the Spirit. The Spirit may be unsought or unwanted, but is intent on making all things new. It's a shame that the Holy Spirit tends to be an afterthought for many Christians. We don't really have the Spirit. We tend, I'm afraid, to simply go through the motions. We formally believe, but honestly, there isn't always that much fire to it. There isn't always much conviction. We just sort of believe. That's why in the Gospels there are two clearly distinguished baptisms. There's the baptism with water that most of us are used to, and then the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 11, there's a baptism with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's the one that really matters. The water baptism that many of us received as children demands little conviction or understanding. Some parents simply do it to make their parents or grandparents happy. Until this baptism by water becomes real, 
until we know Jesus and we rely on Jesus, we call upon Jesus, share and love Jesus, we're just going along for the ride. But we can recognize people who have had a second baptism in the Holy Spirit. They tend to be loving, they tend to be exciting. They want to serve others and not just be served themselves. They forgive life itself for not being everything they once hoped for. They forgive themselves for not being as perfect as they would like to be. Even though we pray, come Holy Spirit, the gift of the Spirit is already given. The Holy Spirit has already come. We are all temples of the Holy Spirit, equally, objectively, and forever. The only difference is the degree that we know it, draw upon it, and consciously believe it. All the scriptural images of the Spirit are dynamic. Flowing water, descending dove or fire, and rushing wind. If there's never any movement, energy, excitement, deep love, service, forgiveness, or surrender, we can be pretty sure we aren't living out of the Spirit. If our whole lives are just going through the motions, if there's never any deep conviction, we aren't connected to the Spirit. We would do well to fan into flame the gift we already have. From Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 30, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who treat you badly. If someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek. If someone takes your coat, let them take your shirt as well. Treat others the way you want them to treat you. By living in the Spirit, Jesus' disciples can do what God does. Or as Jesus puts it, again from the Gospel of Luke, be compassionate just the way your Father is compassionate. It is by the power of the Spirit that the disciples follow Jesus' alternative way. The gift of the Spirit is God's own power to love unconditionally and to transform the world by that power. This gift of knowing the Spirit, of being able to love as God does, is the same gift we need today. We see the world on the brink of destruction, yet people are too often apathetic about it. We hear of war and famines, yet people choose to ignore them. We watch the earth degrade all around us and we simply adjust our thermostats. Too many people just want to be left alone, not bothered by someone else, not even God making demands on them. All of this is evidence of something missing in their lives and reveals that they really do not know the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always a gratuitous gift. It's always an unmerited favor. It's always pure grace. Like wind, it cannot be seen. Like smoke, it cannot be controlled. The Spirit is elusive, blowing where it wills. Yet like fire, it can be felt. The Spirit is experienced as the warmth of God's love. And like blood, it is experienced as an inner vitality. The Spirit is supremely intimate. To enter into relationship with the risen Christ, we have to let go of ourselves, surrender control of our lives, and let the Spirit be given to us. We think we might lose our individuality, yet surrendering to God actually increases it. For once in our lives, we're truly free to become ourselves rather than what others want us to be. The Holy Spirit makes us spiritually alive. It inspires and strengthens us and gives us aspirations, inspirations, and intuitions. Intuitions, that gut feeling we sometimes get. It opens us to new truths and enables us to integrate those truths into our minds and lives. We want the Spirit to open us to his presence so we may be transformed. We believe this openness to God's transforming presence will make us truly alive. We recognize that this spirit transforms us to become the best that we can be by our love. Love is the force that challenges us to move towards justice and wholeness. I'm reminded of a message Shirley gave us in our recent church board meeting, talking about the yard sale and all the volunteers who gladly gave up their time and energy. She said there was no sign up sheet, no asking for special commitments. People just showed up and had at it. The Holy Spirit is alive and well at Centennial United Church. At that yard sale, I picked up a book by Viktor Frankl, the famous psychiatrist. You may know him by the book, 
them, those nerds may know him by the book, Man Searching for Meaning. This book is called The Unconscious God, where he explores the reality and the significance to all people of the concept of God. I would barely read through the preface when I came upon a passage, and I'll end by quoting from it. A student of mine at the United States International University, San Diego, California, wrote, In the mental hospital, I was locked like an animal in a cage. No one came when I called begging to be taken to the bathroom, and I finally had to succumb to the inevitable. Blessedly, I was given daily shock treatment, insulin shock, and sufficient drugs so that I lost most of the next several weeks. But in the darkness, I had acquired a sense of my own unique mission in the world. I knew then, as I know now, that I must have been preserved for some reason. However small, it is something that only I can do, and it is vitally important that I do it. And because in the darkest moment of my life, when I lay abandoned as an animal in a cage, when because of the forgetfulness include, induced by EST, I could not call out to him. He was there. In the solitary darkness of the pit where men had abandoned me, he was there. When I did not know his name, he was there. God was there. God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Thanks be to God. Amen. We'll go on to hymn 271. In Voices United, there's a wild wideness in God's mercy. mission and service story and Deb Deborah Mobs will lead us. Good morning. <laughs> Supporting people's dignity and well-being. Being able to take a shower can have a positive impact on a person's mental and emotional health. It provides a sense of dignity, self-worth, and normalcy that contributes to overall well-being, especially to people living on the streets. 
In downtown St. Catharines, Ontario, Silver Spire United Church's shower and laundry program is changing lives. Three mornings a week, people are offered an opportunity to refresh and recharge. The two shower rooms can be locked and each have a changing area, so patrons have space to secure their personal belongings. The laundry room next door means that after they shower, people can dress in their own clean clothing. Cell phone chargers are another small but helpful detail. This program goes beyond being a practical surface. It embodies compassion, addresses fundamental needs, and provides comfort in a welcoming space. In the sweltering heat of summer, a cool shower can make a huge difference. Your support through mission and service helps programs like Silver Spires to support people's well-being. Thank you. We'll now take care of our offering and um, We'll do our Generous God, we offer to you the gifts of our hearts and the resources you have entrusted to us. Bless these offerings, the finances collected here, those given digitally, and all other sh shared resources and talents as a sign of our shared commitment to your work in the world. May they strengthen the church and spread your love and justice near and far. With grateful hearts, we dedicate all gifts to you. Amen. And the prayers of the people, um, just remember again uh, Hilda and Chris Valentine and their health issues, and uh, keep Deb's brother and family in, in our prayers. And two, with all the latest news, all the racist actions happening in our country, um, pray for that we can resolve them somehow. Okay. God of compassion and justice, we lift up our prayers to you knowing you hear the cries of all who are in need. Teach us to see your face in the least of our siblings as we remember your call to serve them. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who hunger in a world of plenty, for children who go to bed without food, and for families who struggle to put a meal on the table, may we be moved to action and compassion. For those who thirst, those without access to clean water, and for communities ravaged by drought, may we work together to quench their thirst and steward the resources of your creation. Give us the resolve to provide water to the thirsty. For those who lack shelter and those who are displaced from their homes by conflict or disaster, may we open our hearts and our communities to provide refuge and peace strength to clothe the naked and shelter the homeless. For those who suffer in isolation, those imprisoned, those who are lonely, and those marginalized by society, may we bring the light of fellowship and care to, to their lives. Give us the courage to visit and comfort 
lonely and imprisoned. For the oppressed, the exploited, and all who struggle for freedom and justice, may we lend our voices and our actions to their cause, reflecting your calls for justice. For our own community, that we may recognize the needs around us and respond with love, breaking down the barriers of fear or indifference that separate us. God of all, we pray for the church worldwide, that it may be a source of hope and a beacon of your love in the world. Strengthen us to live out the gospel, not just in word, but in deed. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us the fullness of love and the power of humble service. Amen. And we'll continue with um, hymn 424 in Voices United. May the God of hope go with us. have something written to say <laughs> so thank you for worshiping with us this morning and you know that coffee will be in the CE wing following following our closure yeah. 